All right, so lately my YouTube feed has been flooded with videos claiming Streets is pay to win or you need a super PC to play Streets. You need the latest hardware to even sniff good FPS on Streets. It's a well-known fact that negative content tends to get more views, which might be why these videos are so popular, but it seems like it's making everyone believe it's nearly impossible to get good performance on Streets. Well, I'm here to show you that none of that is true. It seems like the default attitude these days is to just complain about everything. This video might not get as many views as those, complaining about how poorly optimized Streets is or that you need a NASA computer to play it, but I refuse to go down that route. Instead of complaining, I'd rather find a solution. So if you're on an older rig or thinking about upgrading to get better performance, I'm going to show you how little you really need to spend to get good FPS in Tarkov, especially on streets. So I brought out an older setup that people who are looking to upgrade might typically be running right now. This is an i5-9400F running 32 gigs of DDR4 with a 512 gb M.2 and it's got a GTX 1650 Super as a GPU. It's still a decently capable gaming rig, but maybe struggling a bit in newer games or in Tarkov, especially Streets. With this setup, I'm getting close to a 60 FPS average on Streets, but it drops into the 40s at times and sometimes even lower when scoping in. And there are quite a few micro stutters. It's not an ideal experience, and I feel at a disadvantage in fights with other players. Right now, even with a top tier setup like a 7800X3D paired with a strong GPU, the best you're going to get with the fog removal is around 100, maybe 120 FPS on streets. A 7800X3D setup is likely to cost you around 1500 bucks, which I think is a pretty good price, but I'm gonna show you an upgrade path that will put you in that elite ballpark for performance at a fraction of that cost. Introducing my Budget Beast build, featuring the best bang for the buck gaming CPU in 2024, the Ryzen 7 5700X3D. I've shown plenty of times on my channel that you don't need an expensive motherboard or RAM with an X3D, so I reused the same RAM and M2 drive from my 9400F system I showed you earlier and opted for a cost-effective A520 motherboard as the base. Another way the X3D saves you money is with its low power consumption and cool running temps. To prove this, I'm using an AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler, which you can buy new on Amazon right now for just 7 bucks. If you really want to splurge, you can opt for a 4-pipe 120mm cooler that'll cost you around 17 bucks, and that'll provide more than enough cooling. I'm going to be using the same GTX 1650 Super from the original build to show you how effective the X3D is. All in all, I spent about 207 bucks for these parts. Let's go see how it performs. All right, so here we are on streets. As you can see, I'm breaking the 100 FPS barrier by a good amount. After the fog removal, I've seen a lot of rubber banding in the frame rate, but it's anywhere from 90 to 110 on average, and then it'll dip maybe into the 80s, a little less if you go into inventory. You'll get those little um, frame time spikes that will bring down that 1% low average number. But overall, the gameplay feels butter smooth. Not really getting any motion blur or ghosting. It just is a pleasure to play on this machine. And all I really did was change the CPU and motherboard. Same RAM, same M2, same GTX 1650 Super. And I chose to use my A520 here and the Raid Stealth as I mentioned earlier just to show that you really don't need to go all out on parts. You just need to pick the correct ones. So I hope this video helped prove to you that while Streets of Tarkov does require a good PC to run, you don't need to spend a ton of your hard earned cash if you know what to get. Basically X3D is your friend and it will carry almost any GPU to great performance in this title. If you do decide to invest in a better card for an even more immersive experience with improved graphics and visuals, my pick for the best bang for the buck gaming GPU is the criminally underrated RX 6600 XT. I regularly see this card available for under 200 used and sometimes the 6650 XT is even cheaper due to availability. 
With this card, you can get excellent frame rates up to 1440p with medium to high textures using FSR. I just did a live stream on my channel demonstrating how well this sub $500 build performs in QHD. If you want to go native 1440, I'd suggest something like an RX 6800, 6800 XT, 7800 XT, 6950 XT, maybe a 3080 10 gig or 4070 for the best bang for the buck while maxing out performance. Anything above this level of cards won't net you much more performance in 1440 and will still require scaling for 4K. The price can increase significantly for cards like the 7900 XT or 4080, but in my opinion, they're not worth that extra cost if you're staying in 1440. Instead, I'd suggest spending that extra money on a nicer monitor, mouse, or keyboard as these are your physical connection to your experience and upgrades here can immensely improve your experience. Or you could always pocket that extra cash. I hope this video was helpful or informative for you. If it was, please send the like and subscribe buttons back to Stash with an armpit shot. I'm also streaming four times a week on YouTube aiming for every Wednesday and Friday through Sunday, but also in between if I have the time. As always, thank you for spending some of your valuable time here. I'm incredibly grateful for all your likes, subs, and comments. I'm on a long journey toward my dream of becoming a full-time content creator, and each one helps me take another step toward that goal. Alright, that's all I've got for today. I'll see you in the next one.